Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our traditional worship will begin in a few moments. Worship together with us in either place, far away or near, it's good to be together. Those of you who are in this room today, uh, just a reminder that you have seen probably already now the envelopes that are in the uh, pews and on your chairs. Those are envelopes from uh, Lutheran uh, Disaster Relief, and you can use them again uh, as uh, we often do to help those in our world who are in need. This time we can use them for hurricane relief, and you can uh, place your offering in them, uh, send them in, drop them off on an offering plate, run by the church, uh, you can even give on your smartphone, I believe there's an app for that too, but uh, however you want to do that. If you do write a check and give it to the church, so write in the memo column, uh, uh, Hurricane Relief, so we know where that would go. But again, thank you for your support to those who are in need. Uh, before we get into our worship today further, I'd like to share a few announcements with you. There's always things happening around the church, and this morning we have some very special guests with us today. We thank Prairie Rose Seminole for being with us this morning. She is here, of course, as the keynote speaker at our Indigenous Peoples Day event tonight, and that'll go from five to seven o'clock in the gathering place. You can join us for a meal of buffalo stew and fry bread for a free will donation, and Beth Boyens will lead a book discussion at four o'clock prior to that in the Friendship Room. And these events are a result of a partnership we enjoy with Augustana University and all are welcome. And uh, Prairie Rose Seminole will be our uh, preacher today, too, so we look forward to her in just a few moments. Friendship Club meets this Tuesday at 11 o'clock in the Friendship Room and will feature OSL member Joyce Cotts, who will discuss her book, Raising Little Stripe. It's a book uh, on her uh, raising of monarch butterflies and lessons of life that it teaches. So uh, join us for that. Lunch will follow in the, uh, in the gathering place at noon that day. Just in time for Halloween, our indoor trunk or treat event returns on Wednesday, October 26, 615 to 715 in the evening. Costume children may visit decorated tables throughout the church and receive candy, non-food items. Anyone in the congregation may sign up to host a table and to donate treats if you'd rather. Uh, but the deadline to do that is October 19th, so make sure you're part of the fun called church and sign up for that now. Our saviors will provide breakfast at the banquet on October 27th. We not only prepare and serve food to our neighbors, but also enjoy fellowship with them and offer encouragement. So you can sign up at the Welcome Center for that today. A matter of balance classes start tomorrow, uh, 9.30 to 11.30 a.m., and will be held on Monday and Wednesday mornings through November 2nd. Call the church office for more information on that. In support of our vital partnership with Susan B. Anthony Elementary, we need several new teammates to help us coordinate and provide teacher appreciation. You can talk to Pastor Justin about that one. And you can also talk to Pastor Justin if you'd like to be part of the planning team for our next congregational board and card game night. So do that. And um, I have an extra announcement. You, as you're aware, OSL is selling the four houses that we have. We've sold one, we have three left. And uh, there is an issue that we hope to, uh, someone could help us with. Uh, with one of the houses, we need to fill an approximately two by four foot hole in the concrete block. So if you have skills or know of someone who has skills to do something like that, give the church office a call. And the second item is there's a need for a piece of vinyl siding. This is kind of a strange request, but it is a request because it has to be a five inch double board piece of siding. Most vinyl siding today is double four inch. Uh, again, if you're aware on that, just give the church office a call and help with that. There's some pretty flowers up here this morning. There are certain milestones that we just have to recognize and congratulations to the Reverend Ralph and LaVon John Shoy on their 70th wedding anniversary, which is this Tuesday. And the flowers here that grace our space are given in honor of that celebration by their daughters. Other announcements you can find at the website, but that is all I have this morning to share with you. We begin our worship now by turning to our confession and forgiveness. My friends, long ago, God's grace came to our sinful world to show us that we are never too far from God's healing love. 
But sometimes it feels as if we are. We wander away from God and we become lost in our own world, full of pride and arrogance and sin. And we feel far away from God and from each other and sometimes even from ourselves. So together we confess that we have not lived in response to the grace and forgiveness God has freely given to us. God of nearness and love, we confess that we have wandered far from you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds. We have not loved you as you have first loved us. We have not loved those around us as you love them. We have not loved ourselves as you love us. Forgive us, Lord, for the things that have come between us and each other, between us and you. Help us to feel your forgiving peace with us now, as it has always been. People of God, hear the good news. The good news of God's amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to live in the newness of God's eternal love for you. God's peace shines in your heart so that you may bear witness to the goodness of God's grace and love for everyone. Thanks be to God. As we give thanks for this time that we share, let us greet each other in this place. I invite you to stand now as you are able and turn to the person closest to you, whether you know them or not. Introduce yourself with a smile, a word of greeting, a handshake, or a wave, however you are comfortable as we share God's peace together. And to you who are joining for us from a distance, we want to, you to know that we feel your closeness with us in this room. And we share God's peace together with you too. Welcome in the name of the one who calls us together in love. We sing our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
My friends, we have come to worship from many places in life. We have joined our hearts together in song, in scripture, and now in prayer for ourselves and for those around us and for our world. We pray trusting that God is near enough to hear them and, to, and compassionate enough to respond in great love. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your church. You bless us with a variety of gifts to use in ministry. You bless us with diversity that brings us together in beautiful ways that we could have never imagined. We give you thanks for Prairie Rose Seminole and for her advocacy work on behalf of our indigenous neighbors within our church and world. Bless her work among us and our partnership together. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks for our world, even though there are so many things that cause us uncertainty and fear. We pray for world leaders, that peace would overcome war, that healing would overcome destruction, and despair would give way to hope. We pray for an end to the war in Ukraine. We pray for civility and respect to return between governmental leaders everywhere. Send your spirit to heal your hurting world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you are never too far from us, that you know what is in our hearts. Bring healing to us when we need it the most, and to those who have requested our prayers. Elaine Sandval, Naomi Oltmans, Chuck Qualm, and Tressie Sitting. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of new life promised through the waters of baptism this weekend to Elise Evelyn Nyberg and to Ryan Gary Patrick. May your love and grace fill their hearts with your promise of eternal love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you, choir. Kids, come on up for Kid Talk. Come on up and join me up here on the steps. I can see a few of you out there. Come on, kids. Come on up and join me up here. Let's see, why don't we sit right here? Let's sit right up here. Right around in here so we can see ya. Good to see ya. Have a seat. Here they come. Here they come. Good morning. I hope you had a good week. Have you had a good week? Yeah, not too bad. Good, good, good to see you. Well, I, have a, I, have, I want to ask you a question today. Now, before I ask you the question, I want to just point out that, that I don't have a, a really big, fancy toy to give you today. Okay? I don't have that. But if I did, if I had a great, big, fancy toy, the toy that whatever it is you want more than anything in this world this morning, and I gave it to you, what would you say to me? Thanks. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's right. Thanks. That's what I want to talk about today. Saying thanks. Thank you. I appreciate that. There are lots of things that we say thanks for each day. And I was going to ask you, what are some of the things that you are thankful for? What's that? Your family, you bet. Your house, you bet. Place to live. Yeah, what are some of the things you're thankful for? Kind of, a, it's a, is that a tricky question? What about each day? What what is something you're thankful for each day? Your mom and dad. Oh, that's cool. I bet they like to hear that. You bet. What else? I keep pushing the button, don't I? I? Keep pushing you further and further. Think about all the things you're thankful for. Well, let me help you out. Are you thankful for food? Okay. Are you thankful for, uh, you said friends, family, place to live? Are you thankful for uh, good health? Are you thankful for the clothes you wear and the toys that you have? And maybe you have some pets, maybe you're thankful for them. Are you thankful for the school friends that you have, and going to school and learning all good, good things? And for God? Very good one. There you go. If you stop and think about it, all of us have lots of things to be thankful for, right? But sometimes we forget that. In the story that you're going to hear from the gospel in just a minute, there's ten lepers. You know what? Lepers had a bad disease a long time ago in Jesus' time. And ten of them came to Jesus and asked Jesus to heal them. And Jesus did. And they were all healed, made well, just like that. Wow, that was nice. And I'm sure that all ten of them were thankful for that. They went on their way, but some of them were so excited they ran home to tell their family and friends that they were well, and I can understand that, or they just, they're just so happy, maybe they went dancing down the street, who knows, I, I can understand that. But there was one leper that turned back and went back to Jesus, and you know what he did? What do you suppose he did after Jesus healed him? Thanks. Yep, said thanks, said thanks. He did. I love that story because it's a reminder that sometimes... We forget to th give thanks to God for all the things that we're thankful for, right? I mean, a lot of times when we say our prayers, we're, we're, our prayers are, are mostly requests from things that we'd like to have from God, right? You know, God, I need this. God, I need that. You know, we kind of do that, and that's okay because God wants to hear those things. Our prayers to God are often requests for things. But how often do we say prayers of God that just say, thanks. That's what the story is kind of about today, saying thanks to God for all of the things that God does for us and for God's loving us. Right. So my, my, my question for you today is that can you do this for me? Can you do this for me this week? Each time you say your prayers, can you say thanks to God this week? in your prayers together. And maybe you can do that with your family, too. A lot of times we do it. We do it all the time when we have our, our food. That's an easy one, because I'll sit down at the table and we'll say, table grace, right? Thank you, God, for this food. Well, that's an easy one. But do you ever say a prayer to God like, thank you, God, that, uh, uh, that I got a new pair of shoes today? Or thank you, God, that I had a, a meal with my family? Or thank you, God, that it's just another day? Thank you, God, that it's fall and there's all kinds of pretty colors around us. Thank you, God, for loving me. That's all. Thank you. Remember this story this week. And remember to give thanks. 
Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for all the good things in our life. Thank you for all the things that you give to us. Thank you, God, for the gifts that we sometimes take for granted that come from you. Help us to remember each day, God, to give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Have a great week, okay? Take care. You're welcome. <laughs>
Some reflections on our text. I could write a dozen sermons on the text before us, whether it's on gratitude or joyfulness or suffering and loss. And, and being an indigenous person, I wanted to talk a little bit from that perspective. I think of, of Paul and where he is writing to Timothy right now in these words. He's writing from his, his pain and suffering. He's currently incarcerated. There's no religious freedom for Paul and those who follow Christ in this era. And he's telling Paul his legacy and asking him to do things, right? Live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. And so Paul speaks of his, his own suffering being chained for living his truth as a follower of Christ. And pain and suffering, when we think of our own lives and those moments of, of pain and suffering that we've all gone through, it hits us different when we hear things. Our reality is shifted. Our context is different when we're moving through pain. And here, Jesus is coming through this area of, of Samaria where these lepers are trying to be seen. And that's what Paul is also doing. He just wants to be seen and heard towards the end of his life, right? As we know, scholars have said, this is, these are the last things that Paul wrote in 2 Timothy. And today, when we think of the incarcerated, how do we think of them, right? Well, it must, must be in there for some reason, right? That justice system and how it served those early disciples of Christ. And today, how are we sitting with those who are incarcerated? But Samaria, these 10 men who want to be seen, I also think of Samaria, if, if you know this about the region, it's where the half-breeds lived. They were half Jewish, half pagan. And the Jewish didn't like that they were mixed blood and mixed religion, and the pagans didn't really like that they were mixed blood and mixed religion. And I really identify with this, being of mixed heritage myself. My mom's a proud German Russian, uh, German from Russia, uh, growing up in western North Dakota, where it was a big deal when the Lutherans started marrying the Catholics, right? It came from the Lutheran Church, I think, before it was even called the Lutheran Church. Whatever Martin is, that's what, that's what we are, Martin, because <laughs> we were there. When we think about this region and uh, the treatment of the Sumerians being of mixed blood, they're foreigners, right? I identify with that. Because it wasn't until my mom and dad, because it was a big deal when my mom brought this big Indian guy home, full blood, Rikra, Northern Cheyenne, Dakota, Dakota background. And it wasn't until they started having kids, pretty good looking kids, I might say, <laughs> that we just broke those tensions down between the families, and we were just family then. When Jesus comes to this village and he sees these men to heal them, I was, I was thinking of what are we doing in healing in our, our own lives? Last night I, I asked the question of this, this congregation, who are we and how do we see ourselves? So I ask that to you too, what role do you have in your family and in community? What are we accountable to with our responsibilities? How are we seeing others? When Paul writes, if we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. That's hope there, right? That we will continue. And so I'm often like those other nine, like, oh, I got this blessing, awesome, we'll go, keep going. But I also think of those who are incarcerated, and I think of my brother, my older brother, who wanted to be a horseman his entire life. And he struggled with addiction, and addiction led to incarceration, where he's 40 years old, and he finally got his horses. He still struggles with addiction, and, but he got these horses. It's middle of winter, and he was on his way to Fargo because he's still on probation. And he ends up in a car accident. And he seems okay, 
to the farmer who picked him up because it was his land and saw that this guy wrecked on his land and drove him to the clinic. And the clinic, they didn't treat him very nicely. My brother was, you know, six feet tall, brown, big dark guy. And they didn't treat him very nicely, so he walked out. But as he walked out, they called local law enforcement. And he didn't do anything wrong walking out of the clinic, but they said there's a suspicious looking person leaving our facility. And for things we're still wrestling with, later that day, my, my brother died in the custody of law enforcement. And he left me with these horses. And it's the middle of winter, and I'm grieving, I'm angry, and I gotta go feed these horses who are not on a real road. I have to go on a gravel road, and there's, I don't, I don't, I don't have heavy equipment. So I got this big sled, big sled, that I'm dragging with a rope full of hay and going, it's about two miles, so I'm dragging this big sled through the country road. And I'm angry, I'm cursing my brother, I'm cursing other things. <laughs> Sweating inside my snowsuit because it's 30 below outside and I get over this hill, and even in the winter time, the badlands and the grasslands are beautiful, right? I get over this hill and the, the horses are along, they're out there and they're feeding or digging in the snow, and they see me and they, all their heads perk up. And they look at me and they're like, there's a person, she's got food, and they just start running towards me. I'm not scared. But I forget my, my anger and I forget my grief because in the presence of these horses, they just take that pain away. I still wrestle with, with losing my brother and I wrestle with, you know, the least place I expect a blessing is when I was judging him and I was fighting with him and, and, and not being the best of sisters. But just as Jesus told those men to do, go show yourselves, take an action, right? Anytime we've le left that moment of pain and suffering ourselves, we've taken some action, whether it's getting up to get the kids to school or go to work, whatever routine, we're taking that step, we're getting out of our grief, we're getting out of our suffering somehow, I'm serving my time, right? I got up because God gave me something to do and a life to build. Now I have 10 horses. <laughs> I'm trying to create goodness wherever I am because I'm reminded, you know, Jesus died for the dignity of humanity. He died being that hope for those who are suffering, for those who are in pain. And Paul reminds us, live in that truth, be faithful. It's not easy for us to do. I am, I'm often like those nine. I just kind of run off. I'm not always falling to my knees in gratitude and gratefulness for the healing that I'm receiving. But I see that healing. Those 10 men were seen. The foreigner was seen. I often wrestle with that within this church, being indigenous, understanding our history. How do I even fit here? What is my role here? So I want to share a song with you. And this song is really just about sitting and being in beauty with one another. But I ask you, how are you creating goodness where you are? How are we sitting with those who are incarcerated? those who are different from ourselves, those whose truth challenge who we are and what we were taught, and how are we being in this space together. So this song is about sitting in the beauty of who we are. And then I'll close with a prayer. Hey, 
Holy Creator, Mother, we ask that you see us in this moment. See us in our moments of humanity. This is a time we have dreamed of. These moments, our work, our work from love of our people, our people's community. We root ourselves in these places, root ourselves in the love of all those who came before us, who dreamed of us. I ask that you plant yourself and breathe with me. Breathe in this air of hope. Exhale the tensions that no longer serve a purpose. Breathe in the love we are feeling from those that came before us, that love and unity in the vision we reach to. Breathe. When we work in love, we exercise the most important gift creator bestows upon creation. Free will. Freed in Christ, for he has seen us, known us, and saves us through our faith, not forsaken. You have given us life and breath and place and faith. Shadunak Dagan, all my relatives. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, and with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. My friends, we have, as we have offered our prayers to God, we also offer our financial gifts in support of the ministry God has called us to share. We give our gifts knowing that through them, we help to bring God's love nearer to those in need. We now receive our offering, and I invite the kids to come up and help with noisy offering. Come on up, kids, and grab a bucket. Please join me in prayer. Ever-present God, we thank you for the gifts that you have first given to us. Use these gifts as we return to you the glory that you have given us in your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God no greater offering of love has ever been given than the gift of life Jesus gave to all of creation when he laid down his life. It is here at God's table that we are reminded of just how near God has come to us, so near that in receiving this sacrament of grace, God comes to live in us.
As we prepare to come to God's table, we remember that it was on the night in which he was betrayed that Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, we take our place at your table by praying the grace that you have taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Out of great love, God has come to us. Come now and find love at this table. You may be seated. Good morning. Thanks for choosing to worship with us today. I'm Justin, one of the pastors here at Our Saviors. As you've heard in worship, our fall series is called Never Too Far. I love this series. Each week we honestly consider a different way we feel far from God and far from each other. And then we get to remember that God helps us close the gap. And that's why I'm talking to you now. I have no idea where you are or what you're doing. You could be cooking waffles, or drinking your coffee while you check the news on your phone, or folding laundry in your pajamas. I have no idea. So it would be easy to assume we are far apart, but I know you're not as far away as it seems. I believe the Holy Spirit connects us, and I know many of you feel the Spirit of God as you worship with us this morning. But I also know you're never too far away from us because many of you respond to us. You send us your prayers, you mail us notes and letters, you greet us on Facebook. If you've never done this before, you should try it out. Send us a prayer request. Just tell us what's on your mind. You can also join the others worshiping with us today by giving a gift to God. You can either give to this church or to the church closest to you. Many of you already do. God sees this. If you want to give a gift to OSL, it's pretty easy. You can give securely on our website at oslchurch.com giving, or you can just text the word sharing to 73256. Sharing, 73256, that's all you gotta do. Anytime you give to God any amount, you grow even more connected to the work of God in the world because you become one of the people who makes it happen. That's how we connect our faith to everyday life. That's what we try to do here at our church. And I'm glad you're a part of it too. Thanks for being with us today. God loves you. Have a great week.
Please join me in prayer. We do not leave God at this table. God goes with us into this world, filled with brokenness and division. God goes with us so that through us, God's healing may be shared with those around us wherever we may go. Let us pray. God, you have shown us just how close you are. We are never far from your love, for you are never far from us. Thank you for your ever-present gift of love. Make us bold in sharing this love with the world. Amen. Thank you again, Prairie Rose, for being with us today. It has been a privilege indeed. We look forward to this afternoon, too. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.